This video will walk you through the chart of accounts I have created for the Furniture Flipping 101's Business Management Course Bookkeeping Module. If you are currently enrolled or are a past Business Management Course student, you will have access to this chart of accounts as a free download. You can set up your software following the structure for those not enrolled in the Business Management Course, or you can enroll using the link in the description below. I use Sage 50 premium accounting software, but there are other bookkeeping software options available. And you can use this template in any software that will allow you to import a Sage 50 template. Import the chart of accounts using the new company wizard or under the file menu import transactions. Browse to where you have saved the download and follow the import prompts. This chart of accounts is suited to a creator business. You can use this template to assemble items, whether it's crafts or furniture. Open the Chart of Accounts under the Company tab. I find this interface a bit cumbersome, so I use the report to move around more easily. Any changes need to be made directly in the Chart of Accounts window, however. As an overview of the Chart of Accounts, you should note that I have marked the payroll accounts as inactive because I don't use them and I don't cover payroll in this course. If you use payroll, you can turn the accounts back on by double-clicking the inactive accounts and unchecking the inactive box. The account structure is covered in the bookkeeping module of the business management course. As explained in the course, I use a four-digit numbering system to allow enough room between the accounts if I need to add another account. Try and keep at least five digits between the accounts unless you run out of room. If you need to add an account, find the grouping and if necessary the subgrouping it belongs in. Select one of the accounts there and choose Create New up here or Control N on the PC. I will do this later in the video to provide you with an example. Let's walk through the accounts to give you an idea of their purpose and what you should note. Current Assets. Here you will have your bank accounts, including the cash to be deposited, cash draws where you record withdrawals that are not business related, and petty cash if using. The Savings and Checking Account are standard accounts, but you will likely only use the checking account. I have created an Etsy Reconciliation account for those who use Etsy. If you want me to create an Etsy reconciliation video, please let me know in the comments below. Etsy can be tricky to reconcile because they subtract your fees from your payments, so you need a separate account to track those transactions. You may use a foreign currency bank account. If not, you can mark it inactive. Receivable accounts are asset accounts. These credit card accounts are for payments on sales. You will receive money from the credit card company less a commission. You can set the commission rate in the settings for the software. If the automatic calculations aren't working right, you can remove the percentage from that section in settings and do a manual general journal entry. I will cover making general journal entry in a separate video. Accounts receivable is for any customers you give credit to and allow them to pay later. The purchase prepayments account is for items such as insurance where you pay in advance. Maybe you pay your insurance for six months or a year. This account holds the balance that has not been applied to expense. If you want more information on how that works, let me know in the comments. Next, you have inventory assets. These are discussed in the inventory video, but pay attention to the structure here. I've switched from using the paint and transfers as inventory assets to posting them as expenses. However, because tax laws differ and you may want to set them up as inventory, I've included the accounts here for your use. An alternative is to use a consumable inventory account for items like paint and transfers. By paint, I mean anything wet applied, and transfers mean anything dry. So waxes and primers are paint, and decoupage paper is a transfer. Or combine them all under consumable inventory. If you have other categories, you can add them or rename if these don't suit your business. If you rename or create others here, you will also adjust the categories in the inventory section of the settings. Shipping is for tracking, packing boxes, or other items that you can count when doing inventory. Capital assets are items the business owns. Mostly I use the office furniture and equipment account. I cover this in the inventory workbook. The accumulated amortization furniture and equipment is a contra account where any depreciation is tracked on those business assets. This account is used for tax purposes and you'll need to understand how to calculate that depreciation. I suggest talking to an accountant or visiting your government's tax website. If you track your software, say you invest in an expensive AutoCAD program, then you can use this account. I do not use Goodwill and Incorporation costs, but you can look into how those work for your business. 
Liabilities are your accounts payable if you have accounts that give you credit, usually for wholesale purchases. Most of us will not have accounts payable merchant accounts and will have credit card accounts payable. If you have a bank loan or take bank advances against a line of credit, you can use these accounts here. The credit card accounts payable are the accounts you use to make purchases. You can rename these so you know which accounts are which. Maybe you have a specific bank visa or MasterCard. I've marked the corporate taxes in inactive, but you can use this if incorporated. If you are, you will likely need an accountant to guide you on setting up this chart of accounts and the best way to post your transactions. I will skip the payroll taxes. GST and HST are Canadian taxes. If you're not Canadian, you'll need to rename these to suit your country's taxes. Make sure you understand how tax laws work in your country, province, or state. You may collect both GST and PST, so you can use the second tax account to keep those separate. ITC adjustments are input tax credits. Sometimes what the government says you owe and what you say you owe will be off by a few dollars, so you can use this account to make adjustments. The prepaid sales or deposits account is for your customers' deposits. Any deposits on projects that are not complete go into this account. If you cannot complete the commission piece, you are liable to refund that money, so this is a liability account. The process is explained in the customer and sales video. If you have a bank loan or mortgage against your business, you can post to these accounts. Equity is your investment in the business, what you have accumulated and what you withdraw. You may wonder why you see transactions in the account. As explained in the bookkeeping module, this account balances the bookkeeping equation of assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. The software keeps the balance by using the owner's equity account. If your liabilities exceed your assets, your owner's equity will decrease. If your assets exceed your liabilities, your owner's equity will increase. You may also use owner's equity to make payments. If your business doesn't have enough money in the bank to pay the credit card bill, you will need to cover the difference, which is posted to the owner's equity as a general journal transaction. Owner's withdrawals is a contra account that posts against owner's contributions. Retained earnings are tracked and increase or decrease at year end. Sales revenue can have separate accounts for tracking purposes. You can have assembled items, commission pieces, miscellaneous revenue, such as tips or selling items that are not refinished. If you buy a table and don't refinish it and then sell it for more than you paid, you can track the revenue there if you like. Maybe you want an Etsy account. Let's create one by selecting the miscellaneous account and then typing Control N or selecting the icon in the file menu. Make sure that the correct class is selected and choose to save and close. Reopen it to add it to your budget. You can allocate whatever budget you want on this. You can also use divisions to separate expenses and allocate revenue accounts to those divisions. For example, I have a furniture refinishing business, but I also have this Furniture Flipping 101 program. They are complementary and can be posted to the same bookkeeping file, but I can separate the expenses into two divisions or I could post to two separate companies, but then that gets complicated because maybe I have a receipt for web hosting that covers both websites, for example. If you add divisions under the software settings, you will see sub-accounts created. Freight revenue is added when you create your customer's sale invoice. This is for items such as markup on shipping costs or delivery fees. You can re rename this to delivery revenue if you like. I will talk more about freight in a bit. Interest revenue is what you charge your customers on late payments. Look into the legalities of charging interest since there might be consumer protection laws that affect when you can apply this. Miscellaneous revenue is a separate account from the sales miscellaneous account. The inventory and bookkeeping modules cover the cost of goods sold accounts and I won't get into them too deeply here. Consumables like rags, chemical strippers, sandpaper, or other expenses that go into production can be posted to the 5060 consumable inventory account. If you use the same method as I do, you can post your paint and transfers to this account. The purchase account isn't one I use because I use the inventory accounts. I'm trying to think of an example of a purchase that is not an inventory or overhead expense, but I haven't come up with one. If you have an example, let me know in the comments. The early payment purchase discount is a credit received from your suppliers for making an early payment. You can set that up in the software settings if you receive those. 
Before moving on from the cost of goods section, I want to discuss the freight accounts. I find I get my freight accounts mixed up in my head and I will try and explain them so that you can wrap your head around the differences. There are two accounts related to inventory and shipping assembled items. The 1580 inventory account for boxes plus its contra account, the cost of goods shipping inventory cost 5080. The boxes inventory value would transfer here when assembling an item or posting it as a sale. Additionally, if you pay a shipping company, the post office, or someone to deliver an assembled item, you post that cost of good to the 1580 account. The two general and administrative expense accounts may seem the same but have slightly different purposes. 5300 freight expense is what you pay on purchases that are not cost of goods. For example, if you order a computer chair and have a freight charge, you can enter it on the purchase invoice. You must decide when posting if you want to enter the freight expense in the box or into the COGS account. 5640 is for freight on office expenses unrelated to the sale of an item, like postage to send a parcel for business promotion or to mail in a tax document. Not to forget the freight revenue account that was discussed earlier, which is for amounts you charged customers. You post the entire amount charged when posting the sale, and then any expense, such as hiring someone to deliver the item, is posted to the 5080 cost of goods sold count. When entering freighter postage, pay attention to which account is the most appropriate. And to summarize, it doesn't matter as much which expense account you use, so long as you separate the cost of goods from the office expenses. Think back to the financial analysis for your business plan, where you had fixed and variable costs. There are a few expense accounts that might trip you up. Advertising and promotions can be confusing. Know your tax laws. Sometimes, as an example, you can only claim 50% of a client lunch to promote your business, but all of your advertising costs are allowed. So do not combine promotional lunches into this account with your advertising costs. You will need to look into the tax laws that apply to you and not take this as professional advice, just a suggestion to help you avoid problems later. The travel and entertainment accounts are also ones to watch. I have different fees, like my website hosting, the plugins for my website, and my Amazon Prime membership, and subscriptions to software companies like Microsoft and Adobe. Before you get too far into posting your expenses, make a list of your expenses like these and decide how to divide them up. Is your internet bill the same as your website hosting costs, or do you want to track those expenses separately? Web expenses can mean website hosting and plugin fees. Maybe you track your subscriptions to software under business license and fees, or maybe you add a separate account for those. Your chart of accounts should reflect your business and what information you want to get from it. You must also ensure you follow your country, province, or state's tax laws. When setting up the software, you will select different accounts like interest and bank charges or credit card charges to post discrepancy and extra charges when reconciling your bank and credit card accounts. The cash short or over is for reconciling accounts. Sometimes, especially for cash transactions in Canada, now that they have eliminated the penny, a transaction will differ from the receipt amount and the amount charged. I use the general expense account for shop supplies that are not consumable, like small tools or items like pegboard hooks, disposable gloves, etc. Before posting any tools or items possibly considered an asset rather than an expense, know what your country's tax laws allow. The repair and maintenance account is for expenses that come up. I posted expenses to that account when I renovated the basement workshop. You can rename it if that helps. Watch for improvements that may be considered a capital improvement and talk to your accountant if you're undertaking a significant renovation or purchase. I use the 5310 account for any fees charged by my credit card processors and the 5320 for Etsy commissions. In the video, you will see the 5898 account I had set up but changed to 5320. I won't include it in the export, but I can't remove it because I used it earlier in the sample company. The realized gain or loss or the currency exchange and rounding are balancing accounts. As an example, currency exchange account is if you have a fee from your credit card when you purchase something in a foreign currency. The gain or loss would be if you make or lose money in exchanging currency, such as when you return an item or cancel a transaction. Sometimes the dollar's value changes between the transactions and you gain or lose money. That's a rare transaction and I'd avoid posting to these accounts if they only have a few dollars in them per year. So you can use another account like the cash short over or under or charge the expense as calculated to the purchases expense category. These accounts make more sense for large businesses with a lot of foreign transactions. 
consult an accountant if you have more of these transactions than a few dollars worth of discrepancy. That covers the walkthrough of the chart of accounts. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below or students can contact me through the Furniture Flipping 101 website. Oh, 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 oh,